Hi, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Claire Aiken with the Fiddly Fig Plant Resource Center. And today we're gonna to talk about the ultimate Fiddly Fig propagation webinar. We have an extra special guest today that's gonna to talk to us about Fiddly Fig propagation and also Reiki for your plants. And so we're super excited. So let me just take a second to introduce myself. If you don't already know me, I'm Claire Aiken. I'm a writer, a gardener, a houseplant lover, and a fertilizer specialist. And I started the Fiddly Fig Plant Resource Center because I was just kind of confused with all the information that there was out there about growing fiddly fig plants. And I wanted to make simple, actionable and easy to follow instructions for plant owners out there because so many fiddly fig plant owners are first time owners and so they're sort of novice growers and so i just wanted to make it super easy for them to have a positive and rewarding relationship with their plant and so uh, that's why i created this site and i hope that you find it helpful I'm also a lecturer at ucla extension and i have two little girls and a wonderful husband so um, I believe in the power of houseplants. I believe there's something special that happens when you have a plant in your home and you develop this relationship with it and you're able to grow it and take it from a small plant to a thriving, you know, larger plant. It just does something for our confidence and for our souls. And so I wanted to share the power of houseplants with you and make things really easy for even novice growers because to be honest, fiddly figs are not the easiest plant in the world and they can be susceptible to some problems. And so I try to help as many people as I can to have a healthy, green and gorgeous fiddle leaf fig. So if you find this webinar to be helpful, um, I ask that you share it on Pinterest or Instagram, and you can go to fiddlyfigplant.com slash save to share it and then you can save 10% on all of our products, our plants, our shops, everything um, on our website. So go to the link below and you can either tag us on Instagram or share it on Pinterest and you'll automatically get your coupon code. If you have any problems, you can email me claire at fiddlyfigplant.com. So without further ado, let's welcome our exclusive guest, Samantha Nickel. And she is a really special guest. So not only is she a a fiddle leaf fig grower and she's done propagation, but she's also a Reiki master. She studied bioenergy healing and she has a degree from the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition. 25 plus years experience in aromatherapy. Before it was really popular, she started working on aromatherapy and she's just really passionate about whole body wellness. So welcome, Samantha, and thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you, Claire. It's a real pleasure being here with you. Great, so why don't you walk us through why you're passionate about plants and tell us your story and you know how you got into all of this. Hmm. Well, I, I say that my, my mom recently passed away and she had a, such a love of growing plants. She had the, the epitome of a green thumb and um, uh, she really gave me the love for gardening outside. I've always had a vegetable garden and, um, and just recently, I, I found that my houseplants are really starting to thrive. And, and whereas in the past, my houseplants have not always thrived, they've kind of suffered a bit. And, and I think really it was just, it's a very different relationship now with plants that I have, including animals, I'll say. Um, it's, a, it's a unique relationship. I see these plants as, as life, like as, as in, everything around us everything is life everything is energy and i think just having that different perspective i look at things very differently now um my plants thrive because i give them attention and i talk to them i name them um i tell them how beautiful they are every single day and they have beautiful healthy root systems so it's just really that communication that intention and that energy that i'm putting out um, I've noticed a real change in the energy in my home and in my plants since I started studying all this energy work. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, I totally have experienced the same thing. And if you guys have watched my first webinar, the Ultimate Fiddly Fig webinar, one of the things I teach in that webinar sounded, you know, a little kooky to some people. And it's that you should yeah. name your plants and that you should bond with them. And it really makes a difference. Yeah. I have some plants in my home that for whatever reason I didn't name and I didn't pay attention to them. And they never did as well as the plants that I really cared about and that I, you know, named and took the time to, you know, spend time with and take pictures of and um it's mm -hmm. just so interesting you know we don't really know how it works but it works and no. so 
Um, I really encourage people to give it a try if you haven't named your fiddle leaf fig. Um, it really does make a big difference on their health and their happiness. Um, so it does. walk us through, you know, your background and, and what is this Japanese technique that um, can tap into this life force of energy and heal people? Because a lot of people out there, this is going to be their first time hearing about this. Um, so walk us through what it is, how it works and, and how we can use it in our lives. Yeah, um, I want to. I want to say that some some a really a deeper awareness of energy work I have now. Reiki is a, is one modality of many, 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 and I'm going to say to everybody, Reiki. It doesn't have to be Reiki. I think we're all conduit. We're all channels for life force energy. Anybody can do this. You can heal your own body. I have done it. Um, you can heal your environment. Um, it doesn't have to be Reiki. It is really just getting into that um, intention, that space of being a channel for divine love. And, you know, that looks very different to many to, to different people. It could be God. It could be nature. It could be um, the ocean. It could be, it, it really just didn't, you just have to kind of dig deep into your own belief system and just go to that place of unconditional love. And we're surrounded by it. It's just, it's so powerful. I think I heard this gentleman recently say that life force is always flowing to and through us. So when you realize that, you just, you start to become more aware of that energy flowing through you. And it's a really beautiful experience. Um, and, to, and then just to direct that through your body almost like if you can imagine my daughter years ago said to me well mom she goes like what is God she asked those questions that children do and and she said well what is God and I had to really stop and think you know how do you explain that to a child and I said well I said you can't see God or whatever you believe in but I said if you look outside and on those windy days you can't see the wind per se, but you can see the effect of the wind flowing through the trees, the grasses, the leaves, and they blow and you can see the effect of the wind. So I said, that's kind of what that loving energy is. And it's always there. It's always surrounding us. I hope that makes sense to your, your listeners. So Reiki is just, it's a technique where you, um, you get into a state of intention and into a state of love, and you trust and know that that energy knows exactly where it needs to go. And that could be with your plants. I use this on my plants all the time. And I've literally seen them transform before my eyes in a, in a slow process, not like in a you know, snap of a finger, but um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. That is so cool. And I love that analogy. I think that's really, really powerful. Um, so tell us a little bit more. And you sent me some before and after pictures of your plant actually taking a leaf that was really damaged and yellow and turning back green and becoming back healthy and really reviving. So walk us through, you know, how our intentions affect plants and how you, you know, work with your plants to improve the health of them. Yeah. Um, when I moved to this home, I, I know fiddle leaf figs have a, a, they don't really like transition and they do bruise. Like you, I know if on your site, you show this beautifully and explain it. Um, they really don't like to be, um, moved. <laughs> um, so when I moved to this new home, it was a beautiful space for light, um, all around it really, but it's, um, it really went into shock and I noticed the leaves were just falling off like crazy crazy and um, then I, I had just started to learn this new modality of energy energy work through Reiki and I was doing my classes in the room and as it kind of started to brush um, the topic of animals and um, our plants and such um, I thought okay I'm just going to try this with my plants and and it was amazing like it just I, I actually hung um, a couple of the uh, Reiki, they have like little symbols, like they're Japanese symbols. And I would put the little Reiki symbols, I would draw it out and put them on the tree. And I put some, I put some little uh, crystals that I had as well. I just kind of cleansed them before, put some loving intention into them, put them on the tree, in on the soil, and some even heart-shaped um, little stones that were given to me by, you know, dear people to me. And, and every day I would go over, I would just, 
put my hands, just kind of hover them gently above the soil. And again, just ask for life force energy to flow through me and into the soil. And I would just envision the soil being healthy, the roots being healthy. And again, the energy knows exactly where it needs to go. It's just beautiful. So, and then over time, like it was, I started to see this, this particular leaf because I thought, okay, I want to see if this works. And it was really incredible because the leaf was really yellow. At this point, any of the other leaves would have long been gone from the tree. They would have just fallen, but it kept hanging on. Like it just kept hanging on to the tree, the branch. And it, you could start to see the reversal, like the green coming back in. And um, yeah, it was, it really took my breath away. It was a surprise to, you know, I know it works, but to actually see it with your eyes was something else. That is so cool. And I love that you took pictures, you know, this is kind of a, um, you know, a, a concept that people sometimes can't grasp, but you had a really pragmatic approach where you, you know, treated this plant every day and took pictures and proved that this works. And I think that's so cool. Mm -hmm. I've seen it work too in my mm -hmm. plants and I've had plants yeah. that are, you know, taking a turn for the worse that I've been able to save. And so I encourage yeah. people who are listening that are maybe a little bit skeptical to take before and after pictures of your plant and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, just save them on your phone and flip through them after a couple of weeks or a month and see how your plant responds um, because I have mm -hmm. some really amazing pictures on my phone of my plants and sometimes you don't know because plants change so gradually but a month later your plant will be a lot taller or a lot greener or a lot different you may not yeah. notice the change but if you actually flip through the pictures or do a before and after it's really fun to see that effect yeah and Claire, I, I also find too that the when you do set in it like your like that loving intention and talk to your plant and and you know treat it like your your best friend almost. It's a funny thing, but it you do notice this different vibrancy about your plant um, as opposed to when you ignore it and don't give it any attention. Like there is a real difference in the vibrancy and the life force of the plant coming through. Yeah, yeah, and these are your before and afters. They are just stunning. Your plant looks so healthy now in the, the third picture on the right. Um, but yeah, you could see yeah. it was definitely suffering. This looks like something to me that where, you know, maybe it wasn't getting enough light, maybe it was overwatered, maybe it even had like the beginnings of root rot and some spots coming in, but you were able to revive it. And I just right. think it's so cool. It looks great. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> So yeah, one of the other things that I know everybody is really, really excited to talk about today is propagation. And you have gone through mm -hmm. the process of propagation. And this is just a topic that I get so many questions about. And I get so many people asking me, um, you know, how they can propagate their plant and get more information. So we're going to walk through today a step-by-step -step propagation process. And we will start, and I will just let Samantha kind of take it away. Uh, but walk us through your steps of how you propagate fiddle leaf figs. Okay, uh, first off, I, I, I will say, don't be afraid to do this because I was terrified because I, I had actually let my, my fiddle leaf fig get um, too lanky and it was, and I wasn't rotating it in this spot. It just, it, it wouldn't work quite right. And um, so it was getting very, very leggy and weighty. So I knew that I would have to propagate it and um, cut it back because um, it was, it was going to start to cause damage to the main trunk. And yeah, so springtime, I prepped myself for a year, or like for a few months, I mean, and um, I got my, my little pruners and I made sure they're very clean, sterilized, and just went to town on it. And I took off, like snapped off, um, cut off two big branches. And I probably got, a, I have probably had to get rid of about, uh, I'm going to say about 40 leaves. I think big leaves and that was so sad to me but the two pieces that I was left with I'm probably getting ahead of myself here Claire am I <laughs> um, the two big pieces that I was left with I put the rooting hormone on them and put them into some clean filtered water kept them in a bright area and it was about five weeks and I had the most amazing roots coming out of them. I think during that first three weeks, I was just like, oh no, nothing's happening. This isn't gonna work. Um, but honestly, I was blown away. It was like almost like within a couple of days, it seems like the roots just exploded. Um, and then I put them into some soil, into some nice pots with good drainage in the bottom. 
And I noticed within two weeks, and this is when I actually contacted Claire for the first time, um, the roots were actually growing so fast, they were coming up and up and out of the pot. They were growing upwards, which was strange to me. So I contacted Claire and that's when we started our discussion and um, decided to go for an even bigger pot. So yeah, and I, then, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just so cool the the experience that you've had because <clears throat> not only are your plants very successful, but your process was quick. Um, so I typically tell people six to eight weeks um, is average for um, you know fiddly figs to start rooting in water. Um, so yeah, tell us, did you use a rooting hormone in your process, or did you just use plain um, tap water without any rooting hormone? No, I did actually use the rooting hormone. I can't recall which one it was. Um, and then I did, I did use a uh, good filtered water. Okay, and I perfect. changed that probably, I changed that out probably every, I'm going to say every five days. Okay, great. And what about um, the chlorination? Did you worry about that? I know some people, there's two schools of thought that you should leave your water out overnight, or if you just, you know, put it in the tap, there could be chlorine in it, but I've heard that um, that doesn't affect anything. In my experience, I don't worry about the chlorination. Uh, did mm -hmm. you worry about that? I did. Um, and I have like a, a system in my home. I'm, I'm sure many of your listeners are familiar, but it's a, a water filter called a Berkey filter with a B for Bob. Berkey and um, they're amazing home system and you can travel with them um, it, but it does really clear out 99% of everything in your water all the harmful stuff so I did make sure that I used it you know that's not true I actually did use tap water a couple of times because my filter was empty <laughs> yeah yeah, so, but I, yeah I, I just use tap water with mine and I haven't had any, um, you know, bad effects, but I know the chlorination is different in different areas. So, you know, if you want to be super mm -hmm. safe, you can leave your water out overnight, let the chlorine evaporate. Um, but a, a rooting hormone is definitely a good option. I do recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, I get hundreds of emails from people who are propagating fiddly figs and the people who use a rooting hormone typically are more successful. Um, so I think it's worthwhile mm -hmm. and it's pretty cheap. I'll link some below. I typically just use the miracle Grow rooting hormone hormone. I think it's like four or five dollars on Amazon. So I will add a link mm -hmm. to that. Um, you want to use a clean container, you know, either like a glass container, make sure it's super clean. You clean it out. Um, like Sam said, every, you know, five, six days. Um, and then, like she said, you cut the stem off your existing tree. And so um, I recommend just the top where there's new growth because that seems to be more successful. Um, so technically, mm -hmm. you can root a leaf on its own, but I see people have more success rooting cuttings of the actual stem. So you want to do it below the leaf node, about a half an inch or so, where there's new growth. Um, and just make sure, like you said, to use clean pruning shears. I had a heartbreak one time where I used pruning shears on a plant that had root rot and then one of my other beloved plants and I ended up accidentally spreading the infection and the plant died. So it is, yeah. you know, it's something we say, but it is important to run them through the dishwasher or sterilize them because they can spread um, fungal, bacterial, and even viral infections between your plants. Um, so yeah, you cut the stem, mm -hmm. make a 45 degree cut if you can. You want to have as a big of a surface area as possible for the roots to start growing from. And then like we said, use a rooting hormone, just you tap the, um, the stem into the rooting hormone powder and then you just put it in in plain water in a bright place too so you don't want direct mm -hmm. sun the funny thing about direct sun is you know you want to give your cutting a lot of light but you don't want the sun on the water because the water is you know basically stagnant water um, and so the more sun that it gets the warmer that it gets and the more bacteria can form in there so it's kind of a balancing act to give your cutting a lot of light but not too much so that it gets hot or bacteria starts to grow. In that case, you want to be changing the water more often. So just bright indirect light is typically kind of the way to go there. And then, you know, wait one or two months and look for your roots. Um, as soon as you start seeing roots in your water, um, I don't know, I would say half an inch or an inch roots maybe, um, then is the time really to, to plant your cutting. Um, how, how long do you think your roots were in the water before you went ahead and planted your cuttings? I would say probably six weeks. Okay, perfect. And then from six, a six weeks in total. Okay. 
from a measurement, do you remember if they were like an inch long? I get a lot of questions of, you know, when is the yeah. time to put it into soil? And that's kind of a, you don't want to do it too early, um, but you want to give it a good chance to start rooting in soil. And so do you remember about how big they were? I do. Yeah. I, I felt, you know, not knowing, um, not knowing exactly. I just felt it. I sort of felt intuitively that you wanted um, obviously a bigger root system. So I, some of the roots were a good three and a half inches um, in length and um, they kind of had their tentacly, right? So you would have uh, um, like longer ones and then slightly shorter ones and then more of a kind of a ball is in the center. Um, but my roots were really good and really even almost like that's the right word to say, but yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And then you go ahead and plant it just in, you know, the typical soil that you would use for a fiddle leaf fig. And you want to keep the right. soil moist for the first several weeks. So normally with fiddle leaf fig, right, you want it to dry out between between waterings because their root system really um, likes kind of a drier environment, but not for these new cuttings. They still need moisture for their baby roots to grow. So you do want to keep it not wet, but, you know, lightly moist for the first few weeks until they really start mm -hmm. to take hold. And so I'll just go through a couple of pictures here. So this is your mother plant and it looks great. It's a beautiful plant. Um, and so these are some of your cutting pictures. So cool. You just use regular water glasses and you can see just fantastic light in your home. This is like the yeah. ideal situation. Um, but walk us through a little bit about what you learned. Wow. Um, you know, the, the plant on the, on the left, that is, that is, it hasn't done anything since I've planted it in the soil, but the other plant on the right, believe it or not, and this actually really surprised me, um, I kept that plant actually in the same spot and the other two leaf plant I moved into by the mother plant in my bedroom. Um, but the one on the right has one full leaf now that it, it grew with. So this is all, boy, oh boy, um, I should have had the date when I actually did the um, planting in the soil. So I'm like within a month and a half, like probably about five to six weeks, I'm going to say, I have one full brand new leaf now on the single stem, one that you see on the right. So that's that, awesome. I thought that was really fast. Absolutely. Really yeah. Fast. And I do, sometimes they take some time, you know, this isn't something where you're going to get a new plant in a couple months. It's more of a, you know, year or so process, um, but you could have a yeah. plant next year you know next growing season which is awesome and and i always yeah. encourage people to take a lot of cuttings if you can um because i've had the experience where you plant cuttings or you try to root cuttings the exact same way in the exact same um spot in your home and some of them will take and some of them will die and so it's just one of those mm -hmm. things that you know, maybe try to do three or four if you can to give yourself the best chance of success. Um, and then mm -hmm. if you do have one that, you know, like yours on the left where you plant it, it roots and it's not growing new leaves. At that point, after a couple of months, you could try notching. And what notching is, is you cut a little slit in the stem to try to encourage new growth. Um, and so oh. you just take a, a sharp blade, make sure it's clean and do like a, a quarter inch slice on the stem itself and that can spur your plant to actually put yeah. out a new branch in that direction or at least a new leaf um, and get started with that growth in that direction and so if you have a plant that seems mm. kind of stunted um, you can check out the technique of notching and try it that's perfect yeah and so um just kind of walking through our tips for successful propagation. So we talked about, you know, using a really healthy mother plant, having a lot of light, um, you know, changing out the water so it doesn't get stagnant, using a rooting hormone is important, um, giving yourself, you know, the best chance of success by having three or four, um, you know, tries, I guess, and then being patient. I have seen so many people that don't think that their rootings are going to work. And right before they're ready to throw them out, they notice a new root coming <laughs> through. And so I would right. say, Know, don't give up before it's been, I would say, maybe three months, at least maybe four months before you throw them away and give up because um, I do see people who um, it just takes a lot of time for them to start rooting. Um, but like you said, it could be as quickly as, you know, four or five weeks. On average, I would say about eight weeks. Um, so, yeah, do you have any kind of last tips for success when you're propagating plants? Yeah, I would just... I would say, like, watch these tips because Claire, your website is so informative. It is, it's easy to use and, uh, yeah, 
you're eloquent with your information and it's just been it's a great, really been a great toolbox I really appreciate it um, I okay. learned a lot through through your website um, and I think just yeah the, the the combination of remembering that we really don't you know and this may not be in some people's consciousness conscious minds but we are spiritual beings having a human experience and we really don't know what we're capable of but if you can start to just um, recognize all life around you your animals your plants your relationships as being these places to really put loving focus and intention on just watch everything around you bloom when you really choose to consciously think about that and kind of just wake up from that autopilot um, way of being in life and really just become consciously aware that you are a loving being and and that that beautiful life force flows through you to everything that you come in contact with and it has a really powerful effect on people and things i love that i love that advice that is totally beautiful and so i think that sums up perfectly you know how to use your intention to um, improve your plants and help them bloom. Mm -hmm. um, and so if anybody wants to learn more, check out our website. Um, it has tons of information and um, tips and tricks and webinars and videos on how to propagate. If you are propagating your plant, please share your story with us. Email claire at fiddlyfigplant.com or check out our Facebook group and post your pictures there. We have a huge Facebook group with tons of people and they really appreciate your tips and tricks. And um, if you can share photos of your plant's journey, it is super helpful to all of the members in there um, and so join us there it's a lot of fun we're also on Instagram um, and so I just want to thank Samantha for her time it's super helpful and I just love your tips and your philosophy and your way of life and I really hope that everybody watching has enjoyed us and if you like this <laughs> webinar please share it on Facebook or Instagram thank you so much for joining us today thanks Chris